Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid mechanics. This video is about flow visualization, which, are, which include techniques to visualize the flow. Here is a summary of the video. There are four main flow visualization techniques listed here. Uh, the first three of them are motivated by physical experiments and the fourth one is a purely theoretical concept, but all four are used by everyone. Uh, the first one, path lines or particle paths, are simply paths followed by fluid particles. The second are streak lines. These are locus of Lagrangian fluid particles passing through a point. Imagine continuously introducing dye into the flow. Then the streak formed by the dye is called a streak line. The third is a timeline. A timeline is a locus of Lagrangian fluid particles that formed a given curve at a reference time. So imagine releasing dye along a curve in the fluid and the shape of the uh, curve formed by the dye at subsequent times is a timeline. And the fourth is a streamline. This is a purely theoretical concept. I will in, uh, explain the uh, interpretation of it in detail later. Uh, but it simply is defined as a set of curves which are everywhere tangential to the local fluid velocity. In what follows, I'm going to illustrate these uh, flow visualizations using a simple flow. It's given by u equals 1, v equals t, w equals 0. So it is two dimensional. The third component of velocity is 0. And uh, it is simply a uniform flow. It doesn't change with spatial coordinates, but it does change with time. And that it will help us illustrate the concepts behind these flow visualization techniques. Now let's look at some of these flow visualization techniques in detail. The first one we'll consider is particle paths or path lines. As mentioned before, these are simply the paths followed by fluid particles. And their theoretical determination, let's start with that, is straightforward. If you are given an Eulerian velocity field, then you can use the same process that we used for determining the current location of Lagrangian particles. You know, you solve this differential equation where the current location uh, has a rate of change equal to the current velocity. Starting with um, some initial location of the fluid particle. So the same process used for determining motion of Lagrangian particles can be used for determining the uh, path lines. Experimentally also this technique is not that complicated. Uh, what one has to do is introduce a dye into the fluid into a small volume of the fluid so that it approximates a point or tag that volume of fluid in some way that can be visualized and then simply follow the dye or the tag. The points visited by the volume will constitute the path lines. And uh, if you, uh, you're technically adept, what you could do is either take a very long exposure with only the tagged volume illuminated. That this was the old school way of determining of visualizing path lines or in the more in the modern world what one can do is take a digital video make uh, break it up into frames and then overlap the frames of the video digitally to reconstruct the path of the tagged volume thereby reconstructing the path line for the example flow let's visualize some of the path lines so I have a Python program that I have written, uh, which will help us do that. Here it goes. So in this case, the path lines originate from one, two, three, four, five, six points on the y-axis. And as you can see, we track the position of individual particles and they follow this path. The next fluid visualization technique that we are going to use are the streak lines. Streak lines uh, are the locus of all the points that have ever passed 
through a given Eulerian point. So and the experimental technique used to visualize streak lines makes it clearer what a streak line is. So the experimental technique is as follows. Imagine continuously introducing a dye from a point in a fluid. Uh, the dye will be carried by the fluid and once it is released, its position uh, is no longer under your control. You can only control the point from where it is released. The streak formed by the dye is the streak line. And that also helps us now construct a way for theoretically determining streak lines from a given flow. Suppose the Lagrangian position of uh, fluid particles is denoted by f of x comma t. If this uh, position is not known, then this can be constructed from an Eulerian velocity field if that is available. Lagrangian position. So the uh, current position of all the Lagrangian particles that pass through a given point x naught is uh, could be written as capital F of x comma s is equal to x naught for some s, which means for some time in the past labeled by s, the Lagrangian position of this particle labeled by capital X was x naught. So the locus of all such points then gives us a street line. Let's apply um, this technique to the flow, to the example flow, and uh, which will help us understand a little more about streak lines. In this uh, visualization, the black still shows the path lines, and the red are the streak lines. And as you can see, initially it appeared that the uh, streak lines would coincide with the path lines, but as time went on, it's clear that they are distinct curves. The next visualization technique we will consider uh, is the timeline. The timeline is made of the locus of Lagrangian points that coincided with a given curve at some reference time t0 in the past. The experimental technique uh, will help clarify the significance of the timeline. Experimentally, timelines are constructed by releasing a puff of dye along a curve in the fluid and then following its motion. The origin of the timeline it uh, doesn't come so much from releasing dye as it comes from releasing hydrogen bubbles. As you know, uh, hydrogen can be formed by electrolyzing water by passing current through uh, water, hydrogen is released at the cathode. So imagine having a long wire constituting the cathode and then passing uh, a small amount of, uh, passing a large current through it for a small amount of time. That generates hydrogen bubbles along the cathode which are released in the flow along the curve made by the shape of the wire that makes the cathode. Now these hydrogen bubbles as they flow the shape they make is the timeline. Uh, the theoretical determination follows the same protocol. Let's say we are given the initial curve x0 of s which is parameterized by this parameter s then the timeline at time t at some subsequent time is given by the Lagrangian position of all the points that made this initial curve but at a subsequent time t. This is parameterized here t is a fixed value that you substitute and the curve is still par parameterized by s. Now let's see the timelines for the flow that we that, that for the example flow that we have. We start with an initial curve which is a circle and as you can see in this video 
the circle simply translates. In this case, the circle doesn't even deform. But this helps illustrate what a timeline is. You start with a set of points initially and you follow where those points go. Uh, the initial points form a curve, so at every time you get a curve and the shape of the curve is called the timeline. The final visualization technique we are going to look at are the streamlines. Streamlines are curves that are everywhere parallel to the fluid velocity. Uh, because this is a mathematical definition of a curve, uh, it is very hard to realize streamlines in a flow, in a physical flow. Therefore, the experimental techniques in general for visualizing streamlines do not exist. What they amount to is basically applying the method for theoretically determining the techniques after measuring the Eulerian velocity of the fluid in some way. So let's look at how to theoretically determine streamlines. Let's say we have a streamline that is parameterized as x of s with a parameter s. Now the tangent to the streamline is partial x pa uh, partial s at a given time t because remember the streamlines could change with time t. The condition of tangency to the local fluid velocity field implies that this tangent must equal uh, or be proportional to the local velocity at the same point. Now, we, without loss of generality, we can take the constant of proportionality to be 1, and what that does, it simply reparameterizes the streamline. It changes how the parameter varies along the streamline, but you really recover the same streamline. Okay. In order to see this in action, uh, consider uh, the Python visualization for the example that we uh, example flow that we have been considering. So now we are going to plot the Eulerian velocity field. The arrows show the local velocity at this time and the curves are the streamlines and as you can see the streamlines at every instance and at every location are parallel to the arrows therefore they are parallel to the local velocity field. That concludes this video on flow visualization techniques. Uh, I will see you again in the next video or in the next face-to-face -face online uh, live lecture.